primeiro eu gostaria de perguntar é, como está como o intercâmbio, como o senhor vê esse intercâmbio é, entre a, o Ministério da Saúde do Brasil e os países, os, principalmente é, a cooperação na África, mas também a relação com os outros, pra, os outros países em, em doença falciforme. You know, sickle cell disease uh, is a global disease, but most of the people who have sickle cell disease are from Africa. They are either in Africa or they are where Africans have traveled to in the world. So for a country like Brazil, you know that more Africans came to Brazil than any other country in the world. So there are more Afro-Brazilians than there are African-Americans. So wherever our people went, they went with all their blood, their genes, everything, their culture. And so Brazil, through our blood that we share, has very close links to Africa. And Brazil is making very good progress in the management of sickle cell disease. Uh -huh. so, We think that we can learn from Brazil, just as we can learn from the United States. But Brazil is closer to Africa in development. So we think Brazil can teach us more than any other country. Entendi. O que há de igual em tratamentos, em pesquisa, em avanços entre o Brasil e os Estados Unidos que pode que possam ser trocados, né, de lá para cá e de, de, daqui para lá. There are a few things we can do in the United States that all the states in Brazil may not have. But most of the things that we can do for sickle cell patients in the United States, you can do here in Brazil. Uh -huh. And Brazil, your SUS, yeah. the health insurance system yes. uh -huh. is much better than the United States. Uh -huh. So. Even in the United States, sometimes we know what we can do for the patient, but because of health insurance, the patient cannot receive the treatment. But Brazil, every patient uh -huh. can receive the good treatment. Yeah. So in many ways, the treatment here is better for many patients. In America, it's not good for some patients because they cannot afford to get the help. Okay. No que é que o senhor está trabalhando hoje exatamente? Qual o seu foco de trabalho, de pesquisa? Oh, yeah. E o Oh, me personally. I, for the last four years, we have been trying to understand why the lungs for sickle cell patient can become so damaged so quickly. You know, before, infection used to be the leading cause of death for sickle cell patients. Uh -huh. particularly the young children. Uh -huh. Now, with newborn screening and penicillin, we don't see too many deaths in young children anymore. Now, our major problem is the lungs. So, we have been doing research to try to understand what happens to the lungs in sickle cell patients. If we understand what happens to the lungs, then maybe we can do some treatment to prevent the damage. Why uh, they change the ID for the die in people as they sick? Before is children, now is adults. Yeah, adults. Yeah. adults. Why? This, we see the same thing in the United States. Patients between 20 and 30 years old, 20 and 30, so, they can die very quickly. Uh -huh. I think the problem is because when they are ch children, the parents and the doctors pay very close attention Careful. to the patient. Okay. When they become adults, the young person is learning to be his own person. So nobody pays close attention. When they're supposed to go to the hospital, they may decide not to go. So they get sick and they wait until it becomes very serious 
before they go to the hospital. So I think the gap between children and adults is very dangerous for the people, for the young people. So they, we have to follow them very closely, between 15 and 30 years of age. Uh -huh. Because it's not that the disease is worse, it's not. It's just the, the, the attention for the patient at that age is not very good. But the disease is not very bad between 15 and 30 years of age. Mm -hmm. But it's that when they get sick, they don't listen to their parents, and they don't listen to the doctors. So they wait, wait, wait until they're very, very, very sick before they go in. When they get older, they get smarter and they calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very dangerous time because yeah. it's like teenage. They're very difficult to, under to understand. Qual é a implicação da problemática social na, na, no, agrava, na, no tratamento dessa doença? O que, qual, qual é a relação social da, da doença nos, na, nos negros né, que acaba tornando a doença falciforme também uma doença social, como é no Brasil? Na sua in a, in a opinião. Em um, um país como o Brasil ou os Estados Unidos, a maioria das pessoas não são black people. So when you have a, a disease like sickle cell disease, like falciform, that affects only part of the population, but not the whole population, uh -huh. then sometimes government does not pay very much attention mm -hmm. to their condition. It's the same thing in the United States. Because the people in government, if a disease affects my grandchild, I will pay attention to that disease. But if there's nobody in my family who has that disease, I don't even think about it. So many people in government, they don't know anybody with sickle cell. So when they go to sleep, they don't think about sickle cell. Uh -huh. They think it's other people's problem. Uh -huh. I think Brazil, um, in the United States, you may know that for many years there was more that separated black people from white people yeah. and it's only in the last 50 years that those laws have changed so in america black people had to fight to get freedom to be able to vote to be able to go to school and to also to get government to pay attention to their health okay so in sickle cell disease in America, in the last maybe 20, 30 years, with more pressure from black people, the government is paying more attention. Uh -huh. I think in Brazil, you didn't have those laws. But again, because it's a disease that affects mostly black people, most other people didn't know much about it. But now, through research, through more education, through people like Joyce and uh -huh. other people, the government is paying more and more attention. But we have to be sure that we tell the sickle cell story to everybody uh -huh. so they know it's a disease of Brazil people, not just black people. Okay. Same thing in America, we tell them it is a disease of American people, not just black American people. Because there are many Americans they're Indian, okay. they're from Middle East, who are also affected. Brazil has more than the United uh -huh. States, but the United States also has many mixed people. Uh -huh. But the United States, for 300 years, black people were kept separate from white people. That didn't happen here. Here, people mix yeah. more. Yeah. 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 Então, essa eu acho que é uma diferença que a diferença básica no, também no, na atenção do governo para as pessoas com a doença falciforme. Tem, é, essa miscigenação também tem uma influência né, no Brasil. The meter has too much influence in Brazil. It's friends. Pode haver. So they have more, they give more attention to the disease or I, I'm not sure I understand the question. Yeah, I, I, I think that now 
the government is is uh, pay more attention. More attention. Okay. Yes. For for this 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 group. Yes. I think so. Okay. I mean that's why you're making so much progress. But the problem is. So I understand. <laughs> uh, I think that over time uh, people begin to feel more comfortable with themselves. Uh -huh. If you have if you have pride in yourself. If you know your history, if you know that your people are also great people, uh -huh. then you feel comfortable and you're not ashamed to say I'm black. Uh -huh. You know, in the United States, many years ago, you know James Brown, uh -huh. used to say, <laughs> I am black and I'm proud. <laughs> the same thing too, because there too, people felt not very happy to say I'm black. Uh -huh. But now, with education, they understand uh -huh. that they can be proud because black people can do the same thing as other people. So now people are proud to say they are black. And the same thing is happening here. I think many people in Brazil, they are happy to say they are Afro-Brazilian. Yeah. For example, I don't know, I don't know uh, the, origin, the origin of my family in, in Africa. I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's Angola or Benin or Ghana, I don't know, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have conditions to know this, this, this roots, roots. Uh, but you know Africa. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know you are from Africa, oh, yeah. right? So why, why take small country like Ghana or Benin? Uh huh. Take the whole thing. Okay. That's your, that's your home. <laughs> The whole Africa. You can take any part of Africa. And see, that's, this is the <laughs> but you know, like. But you know, you, you, uh, your family comes from Ghana. Yes. Exactly, exactly Ghana. I'm not, I don't know. But it doesn't matter. So if you want to take Ghana, you can become Ghana. <laughs> if you want to take Nigeria, so you can claim the whole continent. Uh -huh. Me, I can only claim a small part. You, you can claim the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, it is true, you're from Africa, so you can say anywhere you want to be. This is where my people are from. Teacher, uh, the last question. Uh, question. Uh, okay. uh, como é que ele vê a, a, a ajuda das outras ciências, sociologia, antropologia, história, as ciências não, não da medicina? para ajudar a ajudar as pessoas com doença falsoforme a, a se cuidarem. You know, one of the things, and I will talk about this a little bit tomorrow, sickle cell disease, from a scientific point of view, is a very important disease. Uh -huh. Because we have learned a lot about human genetics uh -huh. from sickle cell disease. Many, many diseases now that we understand is because we learn first from sickle cell disease. So from scientific point of view, this is one of the most important diseases. The only thing is that as much as we have learned from the disease, we have not done enough for the people with the disease. Okay. So we know a lot about sickle cell from the science. Uh -huh but we haven't done a lot for treatment. All the 100 years that we have known about sickle cell disease as a modern disease, the disease is thousands of years old, but in modern times, only 100 years since we know it. We have one drug, that's not enough. Uh -huh. For a disease that has been studied so much, many, many, many drug companies should be doing research to find treatment for sickle cell disease but we only have one drug, and that's not good. That's because the companies think that if they make medicine for sickle cell disease, they will not make profit. That's why they're not spending money to do research for sickle cell disease. And that we have to tell the story many times so that people will know that that's not good. They should pay more attention because there are many millions of people in the world with sickle cell disease. In Africa, in India, in Middle East, yes. Mediterranean countries, in Brazil, all the Caribbean countries, there are millions of people with the disease. How many people is in India? In India, we don't know. But India, some Indians tell me that they think there may be as many people with disease in India as there is in Africa. There are places in India where 
30% of the people are AS, sickle cell trait. And so three, two, three percent of the children have sickle cell disease. But it's in parts of India, not the whole uh, India. So they don't know how many are, are there, but there are, my guess is that there are millions of people with sickle cell disease in India, yes. Millions? It's very common there. And you know, India sickle cell disease is separate from in Africa sickle cell disease. It's not the same disease. It's completely separate. If the disease is the same, but the people in India who have sickle cell disease, they didn't come from Africa. It started in India for them. Oh, ah, yeah? Separate. Yes. They, uh, the gene that... for sickle cell disease is the same gene in Africa, the same mutations. Yeah. In Africa, four places in Africa develop sickle cell. Four different places, sickle cell in Africa from four different places. India and Saudi Arabia have separate origin for sickle cell disease. Yeah. The same gene, the same mutation, but it started different in, in India and, and Saudi Arabia. And in Africa, it started in four different places. If the disease started only one place, then everybody in the world with sickle cell will be related because they carry the same gene. But there are five separate origins of the sickle cell five. mutation. Five separate, four in Africa, separate, and then India and Saudi Arabia, one origin. So the Indian is is only, only one? It's not related to Africa. It's sickle cell, but it's not from Africa. And in Brazil, we, we came the, the, the African genes. Oh yeah, but the Brazil one came only, uh, you know, 400 years ago. But the disease, maybe about 3,000 or 4,000 years ago. So the one that came from Africa to Brazil, same one went to the United States, that happened not too long ago. Before sickle cell came to Brazil or America, sickle cell had gone to Italy, Greece, Spain, Portugal, 2,000 years ago. And Africa too? Yeah, that's, it started in Africa. And it went across <laughs> to Italy, Greece, Spain, Portugal. First, first for Europe? And yes. second from for Brazil. For Brazil and America. But Brazil and America, that's only 500 years ago. So they, they passed first in Europe, in yes. Europe. I understand now. First in Europe, into the Middle East. Then the one from India and Saudi Arabia also came to the Middle East. So in the Middle East, they have mixture of India type sickle cell disease and Africa African. type sickle cell disease. Saudi Arabia. The east of Saudi Arabia has the India type. The west of Saudi Arabia, ah, they have West Africa sickle cell. Okay. Yes, so there's mixture. But all of Brazil is African uh -huh. sickle cell. Uh -huh. Like uh, Minas Gerais, their sickle cell is just like Ghana. Ah, yeah? the, the combination is just like Ghana. In 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 northeast, Pernambuco, Bahia. Yes, Why, Bahia what the, what the gym? Uh, most people in Bahia uh, have uh, two different types from Africa. Uh, there's a type called Benin, Benin. and there's the uh, Bantu uh -huh. type. And uh -huh. Bantu came from mostly Angola area of Africa, and they have many of that in, in uh, Bahia also. And then Benin type, which is from Ghana, Benin, uh -huh. Nigeria, you have that also in Brazil. What's the country has more population with this? Uh, in the world, Nigeria. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Nigeria has many, many people. Has about 150 million people, and we estimate that uh, Nigeria has about 140,000 babies born every year with sickle cell disease. Every year, about 140,000. United States, only about 2,000 born every year. Brazil, about 3,500 every year. Nigeria is about 140,000 every year. Every year. How many babies with sickle cell disease? O senhor tem uma relação direta na sua família com a doença. Como é que isso lhe influenciou para pesquisar? 
when I was in um, university, I used to be a runner and also a football. Uh -huh. yeah. And I was going to do Olympics for Ghana. Yeah. And that's when they test my blood and they find out I have sickle cell trait. Okay. And when I finished university, I married. My wife is African American. Many people here know her because she comes here many times. Okay. And our first child uh, has sickle cell disease. Oh, yeah. He's now 39 years old. So he's a little younger than you. And when I was in medical school and he was two years old, and I took him to Ghana, and my mother told me, he says, this is a sign from God. This is the work you should do. <laughs> so my mother believes. <laughs> so she said, this is the work you are going to do. So I said, so when I came back, I decided I would study sickle cell disease. Because also I found out, when I first heard about the disease, I was, in a, I was a student in the United States. And when I heard the lecture, I was in university, I was not in medical school. I remember that one of my cousins, when I was about eight years old, he was about 16 and he died. And I remember when I heard the story about the disease, I thought about him because when I was a child, I remember seeing some of the, he always had pain. His eyes were always very yellow and he was very, very skinny. Uh -huh. So later, when I went to medical school and I went back to Ghana, I asked his mother and he said, yes, that's a disease he had. And I said, well, my son, who was two years old, has the same thing. He said, really? So I know that there'll be many in my family uh, with the disease. So I decided this is what I would devote my life to try to help children with this disease. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome again. <laughs> <laughs>